hello welcome to chess prime as part of this video we are going to understand how to create a spring boot application or project in a simple way without using any software or tools or in, without installing any software or tools like eclipse or sts we are not going to use any software or any tools the simple way we are going to use we are going to create a spring boot application by using spring initializer so basically you just need one of the browser it could be anything it could be chrome or ie or anything so by using that browser you can able to create a spring boot application with proper dependencies whatever you need it so that approach we are going to see it so but you can use any tools also but there is no much difference so the simple way is we can use some spring initializer and we can create this spring boot project so that approach we are going to see it after that we are going to create a simple rest controller and how to make enable that as a rest service rest api so that we are going to see it so these are the two things we are going to understand as part of this video how to create a project and how to create a simple rest service so like i said first you should have one of the browser so here you have to use So how to get the spring initializer you just try but google and then you can just type spring initializer so you'll be getting the first one you can select that one so whenever you are searching spring space initializer you'll be getting the first url start dot spring dot io you can click this one so you will be seeing this page so you can select here whichever mode you are interested a day team or night team whatever <coughs> so you can see a lot of options over here so the first section here it is the project so another project which uh, build tool you want to use it you want to use maven or groovy whatever you want is so you can select it the gradle groovy maven so these are the options you if you will provide so you can select whichever you are interested but i'm going to select maven so the next second part is language which language you want to use it you language you want to use groovy kotlin or java whatever so i'm going to use java but you can select whichever you are interested so the next one is very important spring boot version so here you will see the snapshot version and a released version so try to select the a released version not select the snapshot version because snapshot version is keep working on the spring group people right so this is keep changing so it's not a stable version so try to select these kind of versions so whichever you are interested right so i'm going to select 3.1.0 which are the latest version currently it's available when i'm trying to create the video but make sure whatever the version you are trying to select and the corresponding java also it should be compatible so right now 3.1.0 is compatible with jdk 20 so i am going to select as a 20 so this very important point what version you are selecting and corresponding jdk should be supported otherwise the dependencies will not work will require corresponding higher version or compatible java version but try to select the higher version which are available so that it will be working so this is very important point so spring boot version and it should be compatible jdk version so and the packaging before going to the metadata we'll be discussing about the packaging quickly so you can use either war or jar but the simple way i'm going to use the jar file here but you can use war as well so i'm going to use as jar version so that's about packaging stuff uh, packaging type so the next important is project metadata so basically this is another important point we have to discuss it it's a group id artifact id so group id we have to give it's like a kind of maven architecture so what you have to give here it's a kind of company what you are trying to build it so here i'm trying to give just frame just frame dot project demo so this is a package structure you can give and then you can give the uh, 
project name basically it's indirectly project create so demo so you can give as per your wish this group id and artifact id and corresponding package will be generated so this much is enough so this is the way your packages will be generated default package which all the java classes will be stored over here in this package so you can uh, you can edit this way as well if you do if you want and you can give the group id and the corresponding artifact or project name so this is the way you need to fill it so this is the first step we have to create it so the last step is dependencies this is a very important point <clears throat> so here spring will support a lot of dependencies you can see here spring web and dev tools and you can see here graph sql react to web a spring session and security a lot of things it will propose suppose if you want to look for any module you just type here you know need to look for spring security if you don't and you want to work for any worth you can select here the corresponding dependency but right now in our case we are going to select the simple way uh, a spring web which can be used to build the restful services spring mvc using apache tomcat as a default embedded server right so this is the one i'm going to select it this module so the selected modules will be coming over here again if you want to add one more is say for instance spring boot dev tool so it will be coming here so for instance if you don't want to see if you don't want to use one of the um, dependency you just click over here so it will be removed if you want to see the generated dependencies you can see over here explore so it will be displayed the palm how it will be generated you can see over here right so this is the only model we have selected so this is the way you can able to uh, verify your all the versions this is the spring version i have selected and this is the jdk version i have selected and this is the only dependency i have selected so it will be displaying only one right now another is anyway spring plugin which is required to create the jar so this is the way you can able to uh, create a simple way a spring boot application and you can able to select whichever configuration you are interested and whichever dependencies you are interested so once these selections are done so then you need to select the generate button so then it will try to download a project for you so this is the project name whatever you had given artifact name the same name will be coming as a project name so then go to this location and this is the project it got downloaded so you can take it and you can keep in your location whichever is interested so right now i'm going to keep so in this is the location i'm going to keep it all the a uh, spring boot related project so after that you just need to extract it you can use a zip or 7zip whatever you have it you can keep it here yes this is the way you can able to create the a simple maven project and you can see all the uh, folders or files over here src and palm version and rest are these are maven wrappers some help command so we can ignore it all those things if these are maven wrappers this is the main palm.xml which is having all necessary dependencies which you have seen in the before so you can see here so this is the dependency we have added and along with that it will try to provide the test dependency how to you do you know test your spring project so this is the automatically added this test dependency to do the JNU testing and the JDK version and the spring version so that's about this palm version or palm.xml we can see it so now we are going to use a simple eclipse to open this project so try to use the latest eclipse which is compatible with the JDK 20 otherwise you'll be getting the issue so right now I'm trying to use JDK, JDK version is 2023.03 and Java as a 20 
so let me verify my JDK version so this is my Java version 20.0.1 and Eclipse version is 23.20.23.03 so this is the current version so this is compatible so try to use these two combinations it won't give any problem for you so now I want to import this simple Maven project into my Eclipse so how to do that one you take this location and come back here and you can see here import project or in case if you are not able to see this one you can see here also import will get this window you can select Maven this because this is a Maven project and then you can paste it over here click finish it so this is the way you can able to create the simple Spring Boot Maven project and you can see the SRC all those things so this is the project created and this is the package it got created and this is the Spring Boot main class got generated and this is the default application properties which got generated and we are, which we are going to see it later so now your spring boot project is ready and default spring main class is ready so how we are going to start this one so this is the way you can start it run as java application and then it will try to download all necessary dependencies which already is mentioned in the form version and it is going to verify the java or JDK which is installed in your machine because which is required to run your Spring Boot project yes. so once you run as a Java application you can see here your uh, Spring Boot application is ready to use it and with default port it will use 8080 so how to access this one? so your server is running under this port 8080 so you can open your browser localhost 8080 and then you can press enter you can see here so you are getting a default error page saying that there is no urls with this particular host and url what you are trying it right so we're just mentioning host slash so it's saying not phone for 404 so basically our rest service is running we don't have any defined rest service so it's not able to find it so that's what our spring boot application is displaying default error page so what I'm going to do I'm going to create a simple rest client so you come back here so you can create my rest service so this is the uh, you can say controller so my rest controller so this is the class name I'm going to give and this is the package name I'm going to give and then finish so it will be generating your class inside this package so now we have to make this class as a rest controller so for that you can use simple annotation so how we are getting this rest control because we have included the web model starter web model so that's the reason you are getting this rest controller annotation so after that, what you have to do you have to write your own api so this is a simple api i'm trying to write public string it's going to return and this is the api name So after that we have to expose this as a restful api which user can call it so that's what you need to use annotations get a mapping so it's just reading the data so we can use guest get mapping so if you want to use post all those things that we can see it later 
so I don't want to pass any API name the simple a default one it should return so this is the API I got created and there is no name so the default slash it will call this API and which will return the this string so I have done some code change so what I had to do I had to stop this server and then again I had to run my Spring Boot application run as Java application then your server will be restarted then you can come back to your URL so you can see here your Eclipse just keep it over here yes so that you can see the first time I'm trying to refresh the URL so you can see so this is the lines got changed spring dispatcher servlet got initialized your first time and you will be getting the response just right if you refresh again again it don't initialize it so it will be initialized only one time so let me show you again so this is one of the important point you have to understand dispatcher servlet will be initialized first time but it will be taken care by backend so we are not defined any dispatcher solid so that's the advantage of spring boot so i just cleared everything and your server is running over here i'm just going to refresh yes so you can see here so your dispatcher solid got initialized it took two milliseconds to initialize the dispatcher solid so this is the way we can able to create a simple way spring boot application and we can able to create a rest service and which is returning a simple text i think that's all about uh, this video if you like the video you can subscribe to the channel for more subsequent updates and thank you thank you so much for your time